Good morning and welcome to Mount Van Hovenberg to the Lake Placid bobsleigh track, the double Olympic venue in the Adirondack Mountains in upstate New York. We're ready for the start of the Wiesman FIBT Women's Bobsleigh World Cup season. First of two heats just about to get underway here at this historic venue. Martin Haven in the booth alongside me, Olympic slider from USA, Bree Schaff. Bree, you know this track as well as any of the drivers here. What are they in for? Oh, this has been a crazy week of training. This is some, this is ideal track conditions. However, you Usually you work into, you know, that pristine ice, but they all week, they have been slipping and sliding their way down the track. It's a bit of a long one, 20 curves, more than most tracks in the world. We've got a vertical drop of 107 meters, 14, 1,455 meters long, 20 curves. That means a lot of actions. And this track is known as a boxing ring. You get in and it just starts punching you. Headed into turn one. This is while things are quiet. You want a light drift over into turn two. Take it off just enough to banana you with some pressure. Back on turn three, that is a hard left. You're gonna take a hit there, but it, takes, it sets you up nicely for turn four on into the Devil's Highway where you are work, 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 working down into seven where finally you can take a breath of fresh air unless you drop a runner there and it sends you into a panic on into shady two this is where you can take a breath you touch it off and 11 is very important to set you up into turn 12 we're going to see a lot of action out of that turn today on into Benham's Bend, another very light touch where you're just on a wing and a prayer trying to shoot the chicane into turn 17. Headed into 18, a very notoriously tough spot here on the Lake Placid track on into 19. You don't even remember curve 20 because you're breathing a sigh of relief. Well, the track is fast and furious, a really busy driver's track. Track record held by Kaylee Humphreys and Heather Moyce, who then, of course, went on to win the Olympic Games in Sochi in February. Jamie Grubel with Aja Evans, her Olympic break woman, was the start record setter. Now, yesterday, ice was minus five. Today, it's pretty moist, bit of a, a misty morning, minus 4.9, minus five degrees. So conditions are going to be quick. Now. Being on a U.S. slider, you take this place to be one of your home tracks. You kind of take it as second nature, but it's got a reputation, this place. It's rough and tough and dangerous to know. Oh, it does have a re reputation. Most foreign athletes are terrified to come here because all the other tracks in the world, it's gentle, you're gliding, you're just easing into your steers, but here you are maxing out your steering in what feels like almost every turn. Well, part of that is the reason why we've got 11 sleds in the field. Part of it, too, is the sort of post-Olympic changeover. We've got uh, U.S. sleds. We've got teams from Russia, from Belgium, two sleds from Great Britain. And the Germans are here as well, and the Brazilian sled as well, uh, of Fabiana Santos, who raced in the Olympic Games as well. But among the drivers, we've got a, a reasonable amount of experience. Among the brake women, as far as we can tell, one of the 11 girls on the back of these sleds has ever started a World Cup race before. So that gives us a great example of the changeover post-Olympics that is happening in Wim's bobsleigh. Yeah, huge changeover. And what a discrepancy between such experience in the driver's seat. And that can that can wear on you a little bit as you're working hard. I mean, you, you're at the level where you're used to just honing your skills and finding that hundredth, you know, the millimeter here and there. And then a lot of these drivers are found in a post-Olympic year, you know, really bringing someone up up to speed at rapid fire as fast as they can. Well, the athletes busy warming up the sleds up at the top of the track and they're upside down like that because you don't want the runners on the ice for two reasons. First of all, they may get damaged if there's grit and, and uh, so on carried in by boots. And secondly, you don't want the runners any colder than they have to be. They have to be within a couple of degrees of control steel that's up at the top of the track, which will be around minus two at the moment. The girls warming up on the snowy car park. Uh, it's all high-tech facilities at a bobsleigh track. <laughs> and, you know, if you get a bit of level standing, that's a bit of a bonus. Right, and it's all fair game for a warm-up. Well, there you see the lodge down at the bottom of the track and running just in front that post and rail fence. That is the line of the old bobsleigh track that is still here, set down into the ground pretty much all the way down. And some of the names, corners like Shady, uh, take their name directly from the fearsome old track. And that really was a bone breaker and a, and a sled wrecker. This track much more modern and much more up to date. And as a result, uh, much safer, but it's also very fast 
and very demanding. Here's the area at the top. You can see the sleds queuing to get in again on their side so the runners don't get damaged. And you have to go onto a little platform on the left hand side just past the jury members, the ice box. And that again is to make sure the runners are at a sensible temperature to go on the ice. And the reason you're not allowed hot runners, Brie, is that hot runners would melt the surface of the ice fractionally and, and add lubrication under the steel. And that would make you faster. And there were uh, in the uh, 70s and 80s various attempts to heat runners for extra speed <laughs> in fact i heard a story of a luge athlete setting his sled on fire trying to heat it up before a race that would be a distinct advantage is the principle of steel on ice is it's that watermark that's what gives you the speed we take a look at this time last year racing in lake placid the pre-olympic season started in north america and ended of course in Europe, in Russia. Kaylee Humphreys looking to assert her dominance on the book. She had a standout season again in 2013-14. The reigning Olympic champion managed to bring herself to a peak at just the right time. And despite the fact that the break women may have changed, the drivers are still there and breathe they're another year more experienced. They are. I mean, we're talking about girls that aren't just incredible drivers, but they can push with some of the men. Kaylee and Alana, especially, as they're heading into four women's bobsled, their pushes have been right up there with men's pushes. Absolutely. Well, the track is in a state of hold at the moment. One of the four running sleds that went down uh, had a crash, so we're waiting for that to be tidied up before we get our race underway. But we are just about to get going. Check again the start list. Jasmine Fenlater, Olympic bronze medalist, will be the first on the hill, followed by the Olympic champion and the Olympic silver medalist. Natalia Sergeyeva, Anja schneider Heinzer representing Germany, with Stephanie Schurek making her World Cup debut. Now, Schurek has been destroying the opposition across Europe for two or three seasons in Europa Cup racing. From Great Britain, Misha McNeil, former junior Olympian and uh, medal winner in the Junior Olympics in Eagles a couple of years ago. Vicky O, Vicky, Victoria Olay, Alfie Williamson of Belgium, uh, Jamie Grubel Poser, whose name has changed subtly uh, she, after she married longtime partner Christian Poser, uh, the German bobsledder during the summer. And Fabiana Santos will be the last down the track. But again, a salient reminder of the potential for disaster on this Lake Placid track. The forerunners, both American sleds, the girls know these tracks well. And uh, still, it is ice, it is fast, and it can <laughs> catch you out. And uh, that's a Jazz bit of a position to end up, up when you're about to go and you hear a foreigner crash. The ice is already fast. Yes, it is. You know that you're in for a busy morning. Ready to get the Wiesman FIBT Women's Bobsleigh World Cup underway for 2014-15. And the first sled of the season, Jasmine Fenlater from the USA with Natalie direct behind her. Brand new break woman for Jasmine and making her World Cup debut here in Lake Placid. Martin Haven and Bree Schaff calling the action. And Bree with her US Bobsleigh heart inside her announcer's jacket here. All right, at 573, that's not too bad of a start. Natalie Durat is a track athlete who's actually from the UK but has a US passport, having married, uh, been married to Adam Durat, who was just drafted by the Colorado Rockies. Which means a lot in the US and means very little there back, <laughs> back home in the UK. As we were just talking about. Nice, smooth looking run from Jasmine so far. And the track is quick. It's been really quick all week. Sliding off a of turn 12, that isn't too bad. You're going to see a lot of hits there. Ooh, lacing the chicane. 121.8 kilometers an hour, 76 miles an hour. And at the line of 56.91, gets the season underway. Brian Scheimer, the US coach, and Jasmine Fenlater immediately posting a good solid run. Just three tenths of a second, less than three tenths off the all-time track record. So 
We've seen a fast sheet of ice all week long. That doesn't appear to have changed for race day. I think we're about to see a track record broken. Do you know what? We might just. Here we're coming out of Shady 2. You can see her just trying to inch it over onto turn 11 because that turn, not a big deal, but it is critical for setting you up to turn 12 where there is just the most finicky pressure spot to find. This is great. That's exactly how you want to enter the chicane. Well, if we're going to get a track record, it might come from this lady, double Olympic champion, Kaylee Humphreys, brand new break woman, Melissa Lotholtz. So Heather Moyce and Kaylee Humphreys took the last two Olympic gold medals in women's bobsleigh. Heather's undergone quite a lot of surgery during the off-season and is certainly not competing in any sport at the moment. Five sixty one start. That's a that's a great start as well. That's a lot of these are gonna more showcase the strength of the drivers because it does take a while to pick up the skill of pushing a bobsled. This is a great demonstration of how well Kaylee knows this track. Of course it's the Canadians second to the Americans that have had the most time here. 116 kilometers now there for Jasmine Fenlater, so she's behind on speed, but ahead on time. That tap right there, that's gonna set her up for turn 17. She's 700 ahead. Wicker through the chicane as well. She was two tenths up, she's down to only 400 in front. Will she be in front or will Fenlater have the lead? No track record, she's in second spot. <laughs> Stefan Bosch wasn't overjoyed with that, and Kaylee won't be either. 56.94, but just three hundredths of a second. Covering our top two, we've got a race on our hands. <laughs> you can hear, this is this is a great showcase of how a new brakeman, you can hear Kaylee telling her brakeman, you gotta flip it. Touch you clear the track. The track is now clear from the finish. You start number Kaylee one. Kaylee, a little disappointed with that run. And new break women have to take a little bit of time to learn what's what. They've all raced before, but like Melissa Lotholtz, Sherelle Garrett making her World Cup debut behind Alana Myers Taylor. Married boyfriend Nick Taylor during the summer. And Alana gets to the top of the pile here for the USA. Whoa! 46. That is a distinct advantage on a home track. Wow, that just goes to show the experience. Sherelle is actually one of the few. She isn't a new athlete per se. She's been around and she's always had a ton of potential. She actually pushed me last season on America's Cup. She's had so much potential, but just missed the World Cup team last year in the Olympic year. Good speed, good looking run. Only three hundredths of a second off the all-time start record at the beginning of this run. 123 1, 76 and a half miles an hour through the chicane. Oh, she's she's on, pace. Hang on to it, but she's got great speed. Is the track record in danger? 56 yes. 63 and wow. Not just in danger, she wiped the floor with the old record. 
with a gigantic lead over second place. Well, she had great speed through the chicane, but she just kept accelerating all the way through the heart, and that's so hard to do. So hard, and it was set up by earlier in that run. If you can nail the top on this track, those hits down at the chicane aren't going to hurt you because you have the speed, which is important. Well, the name might have changed, so the competitive instinct did and did it. Alana Myers, big start, track record. Ladies on their home track, didn't think it would happen today. Up next, we will have Nadaza and Yula. That's a big, big first run of the season from Alana Myers-Taylor. Fantastic stuff with a new track record. And, and that's Yulia. just the loosener. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Alana and Sherelle Garrett. That's a great way to start a partnership. You just can't ask Thank for you. much more than that. Next up from Russia. Nadia Sagaeva and Yulia Shuskasheva. Sagaeva, one of the upcoming Russian women stars. She finished 16th in the Winter Olympic Games with Nadia Palaeva behind her. So change of break woman for her. I was expecting a faster start out of these girls because she's a great pushing driver, but it's also another example of the changing of the guard and all the new brakemen coming into these programs. Yeah, Yuli is a new World Cup brake woman. The Russians, not so much losing older ones, more recruiting more power. Whoa, that is high on M12. You, you could see the driver's head slamming back and forth across what we call the cowling. That's the more aerodynamic part of the sled. It's important for it to be tight, but the problem with that tightness is it means your head just bobbles on it. A little grimace there from Coach Pierre Ludus. I think it's fair to say she hit pretty much every wall that was out there to be hit. That was a, a very untidy run from Nadia Sergeyeva. And she knows it, doesn't she? She's really upset with herself. But Brie, like skating, this is such a rhythmic sport. It is all about rhythm and the break, the final spot where you can get a break in that rhythm is shady, but she is really high at the two thirds point. That means she caught more pressure on the end and we saw her take a tap. This, she is at the lip on a, riding the bunk. I hope she polished that bunk last night because that in fact was on the ice instead of her runners right there. This is well, these girls are limber because anybody else's head whipping around like that, they'd be straight to the doctor's office. I'm afraid to say you get used to it. <laughs> Especially here. Anya Schneider Heinzer with Lizette Turner. And Turner, I think I'm right in saying, possibly the only okay. break woman in the field who has previously started a World Cup race. And Lizette was kind of almost in the full World Cup squad last year, didn't get many races. Right, Lizette has been at 560, that's a great start. Um, Lizette has been a presence on the German team for a long time, but struggled with injury last year and then missed making the German Olympic team. And that really hurts, and that's why she's come back with Schneidy, desperate to try and be in the squad in four years' time. That's a great point, Mark, because there's so many different motivations coming into a post-Olympic year. For some, it's a glory tour. For some, it's wanting to make up for a struggle in a year that meant a lot to them. Well, Anya, a former Olympic great woman, won medals Ooh. with Sandra Kiriasis. Three hits is a rough way to hit that chicane. She reckons she's too old for this track. She said, my heart <laughs> won't take it much longer. It almost feels like the track ages you every run by a year or two. <laughs> Which makes me 190, I think. Yeah. Well, no Yarvol there from coach Christoph Langen, 57-24. You know, that's part of the deal with any sport, isn't it? You know, if you're a race car driver, they're going to be tracks you really like, you really relate to, they're going to be tracks that you really don't. Same with a bobsled pilot. You just got to suck it up, baby, and take it on the chin, and they do. 
So she's coming out. Wow. She must have gone in Final super early, left. shot That's up and came down. She was along the short wall back inside the turn. So of course that means she's going to catch more pressure on the end, hit left, then right, and now again left. That just killed any advantage she had at the start. By all means, she should have been up in the mix with a 560 start. Yeah, she, she just said she <laughs> went late into the turn. <laughs> ambition to speak. I think it was more than ambition. ambition Alana Myers Taylor leads a US 1 2 with the first five of our sleds safely down. Two minute warning to Stephanie. <laughs> two minutes. I'm busy in that. But <laughs> do you know what? I, I love her so much. She is just so events. funny. Her English is very good as oh, well. But, but she, you know, that's classic bobsled understatement. Yeah, I was a bit late there. Yeah. <laughs> you have some people that come off a run and exaggerate everything. I almost died. And other people are like, no, I was good. <laughs> you have to explain to them, well, let's watch the video. <laughs> you were on your dome. <laughs> Redefining good. Well, the sled going into the way bridge in its scabbard in, in the metal carriers which are pre-weighed it's weighed empty to make sure it's up to minimum weight which is there for safety reasons and then the crew go in to make sure it doesn't exceed maximum weight and the reason for that is the bigger and heavier the object that you hurtle off the top the faster gravity will help it accelerate and the better it'll keep its momentum coach Rennie Spies there former bobsledder standout two-man driver he was Matthias Herfner not here so he's presumably back home in Europe uh, with uh, some of the Europa Cup drivers. You can see Mount Van Hovenberg and the environs minute. hovering one in minute. the clouds, the Olympic jumping hills just down the road between here and town. This is such a fantastic historic venue. And, and Bree, actually, we were talking about this this morning, you know, coming here not to compete. Suddenly you, see, you saw your focus is completely different. You're seeing <laughs> what a wonderful place this is. Oh, it is so charming. I mean, not to sound cliche, but it is a winter wonderland. It is gorgeous here, especially with the somewhat a foot of snow they got recently with that storm. And the Christmas lights, it is so beautiful and festive. And it's funny that when you're not coming here with the threat of the Lake Placid track, you can actually open your eyes and, and enjoy it quite yeah. a bit more. Well, this place has been open since Christmas Day 1931 and is still one of the most historic bobsled and sliding venues in the business. Attention and it's the track. always the track a pleasure to come here to, to Lake Placid. One. Start one for Stephanie Zurich and early Nolte. Top of the track for Stephanie Schurek of Germany with Erlin Nolte behind her. Stephanie Schurek, standout driver in the Europa Cup, which is the second tier of sliding based solely at the European tracks. And she's been waiting to kick the door down and get into the World Cup squad for Germany. Erlin Nolte behind her, two World Cup rookies. This is a big day for both. And Schurek has been waiting for the opportunity and finally, she's managed to lever her way into the team. Five sixty one, that's another great start, and that's an example of Shurik being the classic brakeman turned driver. That's the ideal setup because you want a fast pushing athlete getting into the driver's seat. It's a big investment when you want, I mean, it's a racing sport. Everything is so expensive that you need to invest in someone that's gonna have a start and have a shot. And that's why she's here and Kathleen Martini is at Martini right. still trying to compete for Germany, but did not make the grade in terms of her pushing speed at the beginning of the season. So sure it got the nod. There is the possibility of Germany running a third sled, but only two drivers made their self-imposed standards. So Schurek is here with Schneide, and she started just a hundred behind Schneiderheinzer. Far back though to catch up. Well, first time down the Lake Placid track, 57-26 slide for her, her World Cup debut. Pretty much guaranteed the top 10 in the World Cup with this field of 11 sleds. She might well finish in the top six. That was a little tap of relief there. She's got one more to go, one more run in Lake Placid. And her run, just 200 slower than Schneider Heinz wow. at the bottom, 100 slower at the top. So actually, empirically, drove better. 
Look at that is such a powerful stride. The name of the game in pushing a bobsled is low heel recovery because if your foot is not on the ice, you're not moving the object. It's not going to do you any good to be kicking your heels up. Coming out of Benham's Ben, she takes that little right tap, but those taps are fine as long as the sled stays parallel and doesn't break into a skid. Well, she struggled a little getting her feet around the uh, bungee straps that support the driver's kit, the D-rings. Here's Misha McNeil with Nikki McSweeney. Now, these two have been part of the development program in the UK. Nikki McSweeney, medalist in Eagles in the Junior Olympics in 2012. I beg your pardon, Misha McNeil was as the driver. Northeast of England, 579 getaway. Oh no! Takes a tap, and that shows how skittish the ice is. It's glass out there, and oh, just breaking into skid. This is, as a rookie pilot, Misha's been on the ice, but she's so competitive. Who knows, maybe she ran a more of a risky setup today and is having trouble controlling it in race conditions. Well, the other thing, of course, is being in the World Cup circuit, you know, up against the big stars with a camera in your face at the start. It is all just a little bit different. Ooh, high and wide there. You'll also notice the pilots sitting up a bit higher in Lake Placid and really wanting to see where they're going because it all comes at you so fast. And there's so many turns as well. 20 turns in 1,500 meters. These corners come at you very quickly in sequence. 57.86 for her. She's in sixth place ahead of Nadia Sergeyeva of Russia. And that's a decent run to open the season for Misha McNeil. Misha's been very competitive on the America's Cups, and it's fun to see someone so young expect the world immediately. That's a competitor. So now she's coming out of turn one. You see the left bunk just take a tap, and then it breaks into a skid at the top of the track. That's going to kill all your velocity. Well, the good thing is she didn't panic and overreact to it and compound the problem. Not quite as high and ugly an exit as uh, Sergei Evers, and that helped to keep the speed down the track. So the Geordie currently lies in sixth place. And next up, teammate Londoner Vicky O, Victoria Ole, with Alicia Kittle behind her. Vicky's made a few World Cup starts in the last couple of seasons. For Alicia, she is wide-eyed and like a rabbit in the headlights doing the headshots and all the other stuff. Says, what is going on with all of this stuff? This is a long way from uh, anything she's experienced before. So hoping for a nice clean run to get her World Cup experience underway. another powerful pushing driver. But what impresses me most about this British squad is how slight they are. The pushes that they are managing. So in bobsled, because as we saw, it's a combined weight limit. So if you are not wearing the weight, you're pushing the weight. So these girls are getting those starts with a much heavier sled than the rest of the field. Just a few hundreds behind Jasmine Fenn later of USA in terms of starting speed. Jasmine lies Ooh. second to Alana Myers Taylor, her teammate. 114.7, that's pretty decent speed. Jasmine, uh, Katie Humphrey was certainly 114.6. Taking the right left tap through the chicane on into 17. Turn 18 for the new drivers is the terrifying spot on the track. She had good speed in the chicane as well. Where is she going to end up? In sixth position. And she's in front of teammate Misha McNeil. So, sixth place run from Vicky O. And that is a good way to start her World Cup campaign. That's really a spry catch of the sled. <laughs> that was a great display of athleticism right at the finish. Well, the camera makes it look level there. It definitely is anything but level. The sled will hurtle off back down the hill if you don't hang on to it. This is a pretty low line in the shading. What that means, you see on the end, her, she gets height. So if you are low through those lines, that means you're building, building pressure, and it's going to catch up with you, and she'll have a tough time getting off the turn. And she came off 
pretty much in the middle of the track, but that means she had to really haul it down. Oh, so yeah. more steering means the runners dig into the ice and slow you down. Genau. Genau. I'm loving the Belgian bullet race suits. New race suits for this season. A new brake woman for Elfie Willemsen. Annelies Holthoff behind her. Willemsen, last year, just a standout season for the Belgians. Sixth place in the Winter Games with Hannah Marion behind her on the brakes. Five eighty-five. Elfie's not known for her starts, but that's not a bad start. She's been driving a long time, really experienced, and maybe one of my favorite things I've seen in bobsled was these girls in a breakout season last year and finishing in the top six in an Olympic Games. Well, their sled last year was setting speed trap figures that no one else in the business could get close to. Uh, it looks sensational. This wrap they've got in it, this metallic blue mirror finish, is just unbelievable. 115 2 only Alana Myers has been quicker than the Belgians. 122 3 again, just a whisker behind Alana. But over four tenths back at the start, that's a huge statement. And that shows how fast the sled is and how good the drive is. She's in fourth spot, only eight tenths back from the leader. She was four tenths back at the start using the bobsleigh multiplier. She oh, should yeah. be 12 tenths of a second back, 1.2 back. I mean, she's in a position to maybe win a medal. That's an incredible, Yana Skrastens, her sled builder, was one of the former US driving coaches and that equipment just flies. Well, Giannis has forgotten more about building sleds than yes. most people know, and, and this thing is still... Look at her almost ducking through the chicane. It is more aerodynamic the lower you can sit, which is why you see athletes ducking a lot at the finish, as we'll point out later on. Plus, she knew she had the line. No need to be looking. Oh, yeah, that's it was going through, yeah. Boy, she's going to have a good four years. I think this is going to be a real sled to watch. Well, next up is our third U.S. sled, Jamie Grubel Poser. Married over the summer to Germany's Christian Poser. And behind her, Lauren Gibbs, another World Cup, almost goes without saying in this field, another World Cup rookie break woman. late into turn three. We're not going to see it hurt her too bad, a slight skid, but what that did mean is she had to steer even harder to, to yarn the sled around that corner. Fifth fastest start. She knows this track better than most of her rivals, apart from her own teammates. Let's see what the campgrounds of America's sled has got. What it's got is good speed. And a great turn 12. Jamie's made Lake Placid her home for a long time now. Oh, that, oh she almost got it. But she got the second tap that straightened it back up for the corner. Jamie's in position to take second place. Oh, lost some time down there at the end of the heart. Yeah, the heart wasn't beating for her. She slips to fourth, three hundreds behind Kaylee Humphreys. Uh, that's a definite indication that she has got a chance to put a medal on the table on race one of the season. Jamie is really close to the right side on that short so wall coming out of 14, which is the risk. The That's the gamble if you want to shoot it. But unfortunately, two, you just catch a little four, bit of the bunk, and it's going to send the sled into a skid on this pristine the, uh, ice. Third, second, third, and fourth place position. Again, run two begins at 11.04. That you clear the track. The track is now clear from the finish. Start number one. So there is your Olympic bronze medalist, Jamie Grubel poser She's such a competitor. That's a yeah. face that said, I expected to be in the in yeah. the winning Rats. spot right now. Yeah. I wanted to be leading or at least in the top three. Now, next up, Fabiana Santos for Brazil. 
Sally Maiara de Silva behind her. This pair competed in the Olympic Games, finishing in 19th position. But mm, didn't start last year. This is not her World Cup debut, though. She has Good. raced in World Cup before. Long-time viewers will remember Good. a particularly Good. horrifying Good. crash Good. in Winterberg, Germany. Showing no signs of that slowing her down. Brazil with a men's team here as well. Fabiana is one of those drivers that just, it's so inspiring to see the small nations come out. She's got an incredible attitude and such a love for the sport. She got a lot of flack from Brazil, especially for making a pretty serious highlight reel in Sochi, but she, she just loves it so much. Can't come into this sport because you think it might be quite good fun. Well, you come in, but you can't stay in if you think it might be quite good fun. You absolutely have to have this coursing through your veins like a drug, don't you? It is such an addiction. Uh, an addiction and also kind of an abusive relationship as you watch some of these runs down the track. <laughs> Abusing your brain woman as she sits in the back, <laughs> clinging on desperately. It's a good, tidy run. And ducks ahead behind the cowling to grab that extra hundred of a second. 58.59 slide from her. And she is in 11th spot, rounding out the first heat here in Lake Placid. The fields will get bigger as the season progresses. There are a number of teams that we won't see until we get to Europe because of the size of the federation. For the Brazilians, probably as far to come here as it is to go to Europe. This was a pretty good run for Fabiana, and you see her break into a huge skid. That lost a lot of time there. And then the sled, we saw that with Cody Bascu yesterday, oversteering the entry, and the nose ends up pointed down. Down safe and smiling, Fabiana Santos with Sally Maiara de Silva behind her. So. Uh, 11 sleds are all safely down, and the fastest of them blew the track record into the weeds, Alana Myers-Taylor. That's a statement of intent from the Olympic silver medalist to show Kaylee Humphreys that she's not going to have this season all her own way. Taking casual tap through the chicane there, Alana set the pace, not just for this race, Martin, but for the entire season, leading the pack by 63 hundredths after one heat. And we're gonna have another battle between Alana Myers-Taylor and Kaylee Humphreys in the second heat. And next week in Calgary, they'll be banging heads twice because yes, they'll they be will. racing in the women's contest and in the four-man race as well, both of them. Alana leads from Jasmine Fenlay to Kaylee Humphreys and Jamie grubel poser And those three, three hundredths of a second covering the other medals, you might think that Alana Myers is high-stepping into the end zone. Hey, <laughs> nothing is a given in this sport. She's got possession. She's got her eye on the main prize. It ain't won yet. There's another run to come that will decide the medals here in Lake Placid. Stay with us then, and don't forget, you can pick up all the action at FIBT.com. You can follow this race live and see all the other competitions from the season on YouTube. Search Bobsleigh and Skeleton TV. Follow us on Twitter, at Bree Schaff, at Martin Haven, at FIBT. We'll see you for the second heat coming up shortly from Lake Classic.